Hey guys, this is Professor Roberts. Hey, I got a, a couple questions about the category analysis project. And I'm not sure what happened, but the description file is gone. Um, but I can give it to you in this video format. Hopefully this will answer a majority of your questions. If you still have questions, send me an email uh, or schedule an office hours visit with me. We can do it by Zoom. If you're on campus or around the campus, we can do it in my office. I'm pretty flexible. So reach out if you have any questions. So I'm gonna go over this and uh, hopefully it takes care of all the questions. Now this project is done in your teams. So if you are on eCampus and let me switch over here. So we have our eCampus course shell here. Well, if you go over to project and click on that, you'll see the category analysis project folder. But right before that, or right, I'm sorry, right under that is our team assignments. So you can take a look at this, figure out who's on your team, reach out to them. Um, you guys are all doing great in the class. I don't expect any problems from anybody in the class. So should be very successful with these teams. But the category analysis projects. So when you click on this file or this folder, you're going to see a video Dropbox and a team performance review. Uh, there'll be another folder uh, visible to you guys for submitting your PowerPoint presentation. So the PowerPoint is what I need for to give you guys a grade. So I need something submitted there. So please submit your PowerPoint. I don't care if it's in PowerPoint format or if it's in uh, PDF format, uh, it has to be one of those two formats. If you try to use whatever the Mac or Apple version is for PowerPoint, my computer cannot open those files so I can't see it. So make sure it's in the PPT or PPTX format, or just print it as a PDF and upload it. All right. Um, also, there will be a team performance review. So you're going to rate your team members. So 10 being your best performing team member, nine being the second best, eight being the, the one after that, and so on and so forth. However, only one person can be a 10. Only one person can be a nine and so on. So choose wisely, and I'm, I expect you guys to provide a justification for your rating. Because if you rate somebody lower, let's say you rated them a three, and your justification isn't there, I'm going to override your grade uh, that you gave for that person or your review of that person because it didn't, you didn't justify it well enough. Now, if you do justify it well enough, then the person's stuck with that number. So make sure your justification is good enough. All right, so we talked about the PowerPoint. We talked about that performance review. Now you also see here, there's this the video Dropbox. So what I need you guys to do is create a video. Now you can use Zoom for this. Just have everybody jump on a Zoom, uh, record it, and do it like you would do a Zoom meeting. And then download that file. Make sure it's actually the video file and just drop it in this box. Now this box will go to SharePoint that's ran by the university. So it's actually that OneDrive through Microsoft. But you know that way I have your video file so I can use that for grading your category analysis project. And that grade from that project will go on to your PowerPoint submission. So make sure to upload your video. I might have a couple external judges, so I definitely need that video. If I don't get it, I can't give you a grade. So please do that. All right, so the files. Now, when you click on files, you're gonna see two files here. One, the first one is an example PowerPoint presentation that was done very well in a previous class. You can use it as a guide to making your PowerPoint and your video. Um, I did already send out a link for a video. Um, that team was not the best and it was not the worst. It was kind of middle of the road. So that's a, a good starting point for a video. They use Zoom, so you can see how it comes out. Unfortunately, I believe the camera position or the, you know, the Zoom videos of the other students, uh, their feed covered some of the PowerPoint presentation, which is okay. I mean, this is a classroom environment. It's not a live environment where you're presenting to executives at your company, but I want you to try to uh, do your best with the slides and where you place things. Try to think of that issue. All right, so 
the second file is a, is a spreadsheet of the raw data. Now this data actually came from WVU procurement and they buy for the university. They buy everything you can think of, office supplies to desks, to computers, to paving parking lots goes through their office. I mean, you name it, they do it. Um, the new B&E building, Reynolds Hall, it went through their office. So this data is, I believe from 2015 or maybe 16, but it's still good data to use. So I've already downloaded these files. Go ahead and click on the links and download them. Um, before I jump into the data file, you know, the, you know, the slides, I mean, there's an overview slide, kind of like summarizes everything that you're talking about, right? Then they put in some graphics. Now, in my personal opinion, and you do as you will, there's too much data on this thing, on this slide. You see how some of these up in the corner here, I mean, they don't even have values next to them. I mean, when we get down here, they're the, like the 1% and change. So take a consideration of your data with your graphics if you choose to use any. And if, as you go through, you know, they go about what the opportunity was. You know, they were talking about printing needs of the university, how they could reduce the number of vendors from this many vendors, as you can see here on the screen, down to a more manageable number. Um, well, this is not the management, the number, this is just who orders printing. So you can see that accounts receivable personnel admissions, so the people who try to advertise WVU, spent over a million dollars in printing. All the way down to, let's say, Statler's dean's office. So that's the, the dean of Statler, uh, Benjamin Statler College of Engineering, you know, $43,000 in printing. That's a lot of money. So any type of savings in that area is going to be worth it. Uh, so they kind of gave a quick summary of the opportunity that they have. Then they talked about the risks and the challenges. Now you guys have these slides, so I'm going through them fast. You guys can look at them later. Um, ongoing tasks and next steps. So you can see uh, what they are, how far they've gotten, and what do they recommend for the future. You know, it's one thing to say, okay, engage a consultant. Okay, yeah, we can do that and then throw everything onto the consultant. They'll be more than happy to take our money being a consultant. But they're estimating 15 to 20% savings over two years. So seven and a half to 10 per year. That's pretty high numbers. You should be able to justify that in your explanation on your video. Um, now the videos, I forgot to mention, five to seven minutes long, do not go over 10 minutes. If you go over 10 minutes, you're gonna start losing points. Um, you know, there's, there's five groups here, but I also teach another sourcing class that's doing the same assignment. So we're gonna have probably 20 videos to watch. And, uh, you know, five minutes, 20 videos, you know, we're already looking at what, 100 minutes. So over an hour and a half, if we go to 10 minutes each, you know, I mean, you can do the math, it's 200 minutes. So it's over three hours worth of videos. I can tell you that the longer I grade, the more strict I get. You know, I don't let things slide the longer I grade. I get more picky. So just a word to the wise. Um, so yeah, they ended on the ongoing tasks and next steps. So that's their slide. Now this one is, you guys like can use this as an example, go for it. All right, the data. So this is 20,000 rows, I'm sorry, 28,699 rows of data. I don't expect you to analyze 100% of this. I couldn't do that. What I'm looking for you guys to do is you see these sourcing group levels, sort it down to a category. So for example, I'm just looking at this row number two, business services, professional services, legal fees, legal fees you know, A, B, C, D. Well, if I wanted to look at professional services, maybe I can sort it by clicking on that little box next to sourcing group level two, uncheck everything, and then look for business services. Um, okay, well, I don't know why that's not coming up, or for, I'm sorry, professional services. Why am I saying business services? So uncheck it because you wanna sort it down 
we look for professional services. And let's see, professional services, put a check mark there. Now I'm hoping the video comes through clear so you guys can see this. Uh, but if not, you can hopefully see the blurry image of where I'm clicking. So once you pick the category that you want to pick, now you can go, I don't recommend using sourcing group level one because it's too broad. Business services. Well, that's a lot of stuff that covers. So you might want to look at two and three. So let's go with professional services. Okay. So we have business consulting, miscellaneous professional services. If you want to see what the list got sorted down without scrolling down, click on this little down arrow next to it. And you can see here, business management consulting, IT consulting, legal fees, and miscellaneous professional services. It is probably worth sorting it down to this level because you can get more focused. I mean, professional services, that is covering a lot of stuff. I mean, here is consulting, IT consulting, legal fees, and miscellaneous professional services. What's under miscellaneous professional services? Why isn't it another category in there? Well, I'm, let's say, interested in, oh, let's go with legal fees. You know, the university has a need for lawyers. So we can see here, we're down to one page. Now, whatever category you choose, you know, you'll sort it down to a reasonable number. But then, I mean, look at the supplier name here. We have 22 rows of, of supplier names. Now, some are duplicates, but we can also use that little arrow down to see it, you, this list doesn't show duplicates, but there's quite a few. I mean, we had the West Virginia Attorney General's Office, Web Law Firm, Ware Immigration, uh, Steptoe and Johnson, Reed Smith, uh, Bailey and Glasser, Bull, Bulls Rice. I mean, we have different law firms here. Well, why are we using different law firms? Well, this is where it's going to take some time because take a look to see what areas of law that these practice in. And the same thing, when you sort it down and there's a company name, you can just do a Google search for the company and find out what do they supply or what services do they provide? You know, it might be something simple like locksmith company, you know, or John and John or Johnson's locksmithing company. You know, it's right there in the title. So I would assume they do locksmithing. But some of the names might be different. It might be just like Acme uh, Incorporated. Well, what does Acme Incorporated do? So we have to figure this out. And Google's your friend here, find out. So out of all these legal services, you know, we can scroll over further and we can see how much we're spending. So if we selected all that spending and look down here at the corner, if you see my mouse down at the bottom, the sum of these 22 rows is $1,253,215.74. So the university this year of where this data was collected from spent $1.2 million on legal services. Is there a savings potential here? You know, uh, one of these, like here, where immigration, an immigration law firm, probably for students, student visas and so on and so forth, right? Because um, we have international students that come to the university. Um, some, some of the professors come from other countries, so they need a visa to come here. Um, so that is something, but maybe immigration is covered under one of the other law firms also. So that might be a, a way we can eliminate a supplier that does $1,400 into another one, consolidation. Now, you might do your research and find out that all of these have a unique purpose and should not be combined. And that's fine too, but how can we leverage and get maybe better? Uh, discounts or something like that. You know, like this second one here, Jackson Kelly PLCC or PLLC. Well, we have two entries here. Let's see, Jackson Kelly. Uh, let's see, I got another one here. And I mean, so we got three entries for Jackson Kelly for $758,000. Now that might be the go-to law firm for WVU but maybe they can take on some other business you know, that other, legal, other law firms are doing. You know, we never know, but it's up to you to recommend 
something. And you make a presentation out of that, upload your PowerPoint, create a video. Uh, Zoom is what I recommend, it's free. You can just hit record. You can download the file if you do it to the cloud or your computer and just drop it in that, uh, the link I provided. And then rate your, your teammates based on a 10 scale where only one person can have one of the numbers. So one person with a 10, one person with a nine, one person with an eight and so on uh, for whatever you feel should be their score. Now I will say the scores that you give them are actually what's going to be their grade. So if one person in your team gets everybody to rate them a 10, well, they're probably going to get full points on that line in the uh, grade book. If someone is at the lower end, they're going to get the total of the points that their team gave them. So I'm not saying that to change how you rate people. I'm saying that so you're aware for when the grade comes out. So, all right. So that's it in a nutshell. You have to do the, the groundwork here to figure it out. Uh, I believe the deadline is December 3rd for this assignment. And you know, it's completely doable. I believe December 3rd is the Sunday after, let's see here, December 3rd. It's actually the Friday after Thanksgiving break. So you guys have plenty of time to do this. Um, if you really put your nose to the grindstone, you could probably get this done in a day. Um, but I recommend taking several days because the quality will drastically improve if you take the time. All right. So that is the category analysis project. If you guys have questions, feel free to reach out. I will answer them. I generally respond to emails within, you know, same day as my goal. 48 hours is a little bit outside my goal. But I do respond to the, the, the email I received first through the most recent email received. So definitely send me an email. I'm looking forward to chatting with you guys by Zoom if you need it. Uh, just send me an email or book an appointment through that link on the first page. Uh, I'll show you that. So when you click on this link here, it should take you to a bookings page. So on the 17th, there's three appointments available. Um, because of the time of year in the semester, I'm getting a lot of students wanting to see me. So I'm enforcing making appointments. That way I can dedicate time to you. And uh, make sure to fill out the bottom, your name, your mix email address and what you want to talk about. That way I can be prepared for what uh, you want to chat about. And that way I don't waste your time because your time is valuable just like mine. And I want to make sure you get your questions answered in the allotted time that we have here. So once again, I appreciate you guys sending me emails. I apologize sincerely about that file going missing. I'm going to have to find it. And um, yeah, shoot me an email should there be any questions. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Uh, last little thing, Friday, 2 p.m. through the Zoom link on eCampus, I'm available. Um, so far, no one's taken me up on that, but it, I will be there for probably the first 20 minutes. If no one shows up, uh, then I usually sign out. But, you know, I'm there for you guys. Just reach out. All right. I appreciate you guys being uh, patient and uh, such great students. You guys are the best students I've had in the online sourcing class. And I look forward to uh, shaking your hand when you guys graduate. Hopefully you guys are able to come to campus uh, being online students. So look forward to that and uh, have a great evening.